Uh, as Rob said, I'm Russ Fidel. I'm the uh, president and general manager of ThingWorks, um, a PTC division. I'm real pleased to be here uh, to be able to tell you about the ThingWorks story and about the Internet of Things through our perspective. Um, I do have to share with you that I've been through a couple acquisitions in my life, and this has really been pr probably the most exciting acquisition because there's such a great alignment between the vision of the two companies, between our technologies, and really uh, between the corporate culture. So it's an exciting time for us, and we look forward to you know the next five years of bringing the Internet of Things to the market and making it a reality. So over the next 10 to 15 minutes, I'd like to kind of tell you a little bit a little bit about ThingWorks kind of what our product does, um, where we play in the market, and also how we think we're unique. And then I'll follow that up with three demonstrations of the product that kind of show us in the, in the different spaces that we play in. So um, we were founded in 2009 with a pretty simple premise that we can make building Internet of Things applications dramatically easier. Uh, so we spent a couple of years sort of in a skunk works program building out our first platform and in 2011 we released it to the market and really at, at that moment had a first mover advantage in the internet of things um, we were uh, had great uptake we were growing 500 percent year on year uh, prior to the acquisition and during sort of that couple year period when we had our product out we had a number of uh, pretty interesting awards two of which i'd like to point out the first was from Gartner shortly after we released our platform. And they recognized us as a cool vendor in what they call the ITOT convergence, the convergence of information technology and operational technology. And if you think about that, there's just one too many O's in there because that's actually the IOT in disguise. The second was um, in this space, there's a lot of competition for people to sort of show their products in a competitive battle of the platform's uh, format. And so MM Evolution is arguably sort of the premier company in that space. And we entered it a couple times, and every time we entered, we won best application platform. So we're proud of really both of those uh, recognitions. So how did we uh, come to f into fruition or formation? So we had looked out in 2009, and we saw this idea that there were, you know, 7 billion connected things, and that within uh, 10 years, there were going to be 50 billion connected devices, special purpose devices like tractors and refrigerators and uh, temperature sensors. Uh, we said, man, that's an amazing growth, you know, from 7 to 50 billion. But one of the things we recognize is that nobody was talking about applications. So you're not going to deploy a sensor in a farmer's field unless you're going to have an application that will give a watering recommendation to the farmer. You're not going to deploy uh, a smart piece of equipment unless you can reduce your maintenance costs. So we thought, no one's talking about applications. And if you look um, forward, you say, well, how many applications would it take to generate business value to support deploying five, uh, 50 billion sensors? Our estimate was about 5 million. And if you looked out just another 15 years where there's going to be a trillion devices, we, we estimated that it was going to require about 100 million applications. So we're thinking, why is no one talking about this opportunity if, if it's so big? So we thought either we're crazy and there is no opportunity or that we've actually come onto something big. So we said, well, let's look at what the market's doing today to build Internet of Things applications. And so what we found when we looked, we, we saw a lot of investment down at the sensor and device level and then additional investment at the communication infrastructure level, uh, software and hardware to help surface the uh, information from these devices to an API where you could then build an application. But above that, all of the tools that were available were general purpose. There had been nothing specifically developed for the needs of the Internet of Things. So that created a level of complexity. And as an application builder, not only did you have to build your application, but you also had to, to create platform services on a project budget. If you ever tried to do that, you know that generally doesn't end well. So we said, lots of investment at the sensor and device level, no investment at the application level. This seems to be a real opportunity for us. So that's really what ThingWorks set out to do, is to focus up at the application level in the Internet of Things. So we uh, came out and, and put to market the first complete application enablement platform for the Internet of Things. And so within our platform, 
We provide all of the core services for building and running Internet of Things applications. Communication services, business logic services, data storage services, system and service integration services, plus a set of tools to rapidly build user experiences. We call that Mashup Builder. A squeal, a search tool to do real-time analytics, and then a set of APIs that allow third parties to leverage uh, the capabilities of our platform. So the result is uh, dynamic applications that are built on a complete and purpose-built platform. So we think about purpose-built, you know, purpose-built, built for a purpose. So what does that offer in the Internet of Things? Uh, it really offers speed. Uh, our value proposition to the market is that you can build and run these applications 10 times faster than with any other set of tools. And so, you know, that's pretty amazing. 10 times faster, 5 million applications. There seems to be a lot of value in there. I do get the question, though, and I get it from my marketing group a lot. What does 10x mean? That's not a customer value proposition. So I have to explain. So what, you know, what is 10x? Well, uh, the first thing is there's a direct benefit to users. It's you can reduce the development part of your project by approximately 10x. So there's a direct cost savings there, and that's obviously valuable. But if you think one step beyond that, it allows you to get your solution to market more quickly. And um, in LiveWorks later today, a, a guy named Lance Donny, who has a smart agriculture business, will talk about how using ThingWorks allowed him to bring his service to market. Uh, 12 months faster than with any other approach. And when you think about that as a startup, you know, 12 months, that's the difference between success and failure. Um, in any business, it's the difference between potentially a first mover advantage and a follower position. The third thing, which I think is even a more valuable thing, is that speed is directly related to innovation. So one of our goals at ThingWorks is to drive the cost of building a new application to get to the point where it almost approaches zero. So if you have zero cost to try something new, the opposite side of zero cost is infinite innovation. And so in the Internet of Things, it's all about the new. Five million new applications, they're all innovations. So we think that speed is what is the critical component to enabling uh, the Internet of Things and really capturing the promise of the Internet of Things. And that's really where ThingWorks uh, expects to play in the market. So uh, where do we play? So we sort of segment uh, our buyers into three big buckets. Um, on one end, you have manufacturing companies that use ThingWorks for improving operational performance. Now, that's a market I came out of prior to ThingWorks. I had a, a manufacturing intelligence startup that was acquired by SAP. So we help people in their manufacturing operations, which uh, clearly many of you here have a manufacturing uh, set of operations. The second place, which is really where the huge synergy is between PTC and ThingWorks, is in the connected product space. So we help companies who make smart products make them smart connected products. And then we provide the connected product infrastructure for delivering the connected product services. Um, and then finally, we sell into the connected sensor space, which is a really terrible name. No one knows what that means. But if you use the word smart, smart farming, smart agriculture, smart highway, smart traffic, it's companies who have a new idea that they want to bring to market that dramatically changes sort of the efficiency of a, a, an existing process. So three spaces. Um, and it seems to be very, very broad. Uh, my investors, when we were a startup under 100 people, they said, Russ, I think you're boiling the ocean they were probably right. But, but our approach to that was to, to really have a platform approach to it. So ThingWorks uh, is a true platform where third parties can extend, enhance, and verticalize the solution. So the power of the platform is that our ecosystem, which is probably the biggest in the application enablement space and certainly the fastest growing, uh, the combination of what we do and what they do makes the platform better and better, and it makes it you know, horizontally applicable. So what I'd like to do now is just run through three demos um, that will be running behind me uh, that kind of show thing works in operation. So the first one is what we would call connected operations, which is really helping manufacturers, in this case a food manufacturer, improve the efficiency of their production. So, so those of you who are in manufacturing operations might recognize some of the metrics up here on the top right. Uh, OEE, which is operational equipment effectiveness, true efficiency, net efficiency. 
Um, and so this is a plant manager's view. And what they get to see is a unified view of how their, their operations are running uh, in real time. And so not only do they get sort of their metrics, but how many parts did they produce, what waste, uh, what's, what's the trend line been going, is there things they need to, to focus on. Um, so ThingWorks is an infrastructure for helping improve operational excellence in, within the manufacturing facilities and also connecting plant operations to the enterprise. So we just drilled down into the plant operator's view. And so they get much more detailed information about what are the, what are the causes of loss, uh, how well are they performing, uh, what are the reasons they had downtime. So you can see conveyor broken, sensor fault. The other thing we do is we integrate sort of the social concept so that uh, plant operators, line operators, can share their experiences with other operators throughout the company. So essentially they're allowed to crowdsource uh, information to allow them to share how they run their lines better. So it's that sort of that collective wisdom or collective intelligence. And the last area is in the maintenance area, so the indirect uh, cost area, where we do the same thing. We build communities around assets. And so uh, the maintenance technician has all the information that they need to more effectively maintain those assets. So we'll jump over to the next uh, demo. So we're going to move from sort of the connected operation to the connected product demo. And this is the, an example of a company that makes mining equipment. And so they uh, make their products smart and connectable. And so they originally had a relationship with their products to help improve the service, uh, the uptime and, and the service experience with their product. But as they matured, they said, you know, we can take that same infrastructure and we can deliver uh, a set of services to, our, to the mine owner. So in this case, uh, they've built out a portal for their mine owner customers. In this case, it's Acme Mining. And so you get an overview of sort of all of the sites in Acme Mining, which is in the map. The little trend below is, is sort of production. And then the big thing in mining is safety incidence rates. And you can see one of the mines is red. And that's really not a good thing. I can drill down in the production, which is what we're doing on the bottom. And then we can look at the incidence. So really an overview for the, the mine owner or operator to see how their, their mines are performing. The next thing we would do is drill down into a mine. So now we're going down really more towards the service side of it. So now we're seeing the assets within the mine, where they're located, what their current status is, uh, what faults have been occurring. Um, so again, much more in the service operational focus. And then the last thing we do is we say, okay, well, if there are safety incidents or problems, we should be able to use this uh, service to directly communicate to the appropriate person. So in this case, we're able to uh, communicate to the local supervisor. We don't know who it is, but the system knows, and we can say, hey, there's a problem, there's a safety incident in this area. So as a product manufacturer going from using connectivity to help service your product, but also now to take the next step to provide additional value to your customer. And we'll go to the last one, which is sort of a smart application. So most of you, I'm sure, have heard of uh, the connected car cloud. Ericsson has one. They're doing that with AT&T. Uh, so you know, any car you buy today that's pretty sophisticated will come in with like an OnStar service. There's an infotainment system. Um, it allows them to, you know, again, have a product relationship between you and the, and the OEM. Uh, but what's happening in that market now is there's a, a new, a second layer of applications being built on top of the standard cloud. In this case, uh, this was built in conjunction with one of our partners, and it's really a rental car application on top of a connected car cloud. So uh, what do rental car companies want to do? They want to know where their rentals are. They might want to know how the driver of that rental car is, is treating their equipment, and they might want to then use that to change their, their relationship with that driver. So in this case, they're tracking all their rental cars. Um, they get all the detail on where they're and the speed and who the driver is, et cetera. But they also then can tie the driver's behavior into sort of a loyalty program where they provide almost a, if you've heard the word gamification, where they can say, okay, if you drive within the speed limit and you don't do any hard braking, I'm going to give you points. And you can use those points for a free rental or you can use it for a discount on the next time you rent it. I can also then take, as the rental car company, I might have a relationship with Starbucks, and I can say, you've been on the road for seven hours, let me send you a discount coupon to this nearby Starbucks. So it's really taking the concept of 
sort of basic connected car and elevating it to provide new, uh, new capabilities and new points of value. And so that's really the three, uh, three demos I want to show you quickly. I want to say thanks uh, for your time and attention. Appreciate being here. We're looking forward to two great days, um, two great days at these events. I encourage you, if you have interest in the in Internet of Things, uh, find some sessions in the LiveWorks uh, track, which is running in parallel to PTC Live Global and Service Exchange, and uh, come join us there. Thank you very much.